I want to talk to you a little bit about anxiety and depression. Primarily anxiety, but also depression because they're very, they're very closely linked in what we're going to be talking about today. Before I even get started, I just want to ask, do you have anxiety or depression? Is that something that you, that you struggle with? And it doesn't just have to be anxiety or depression. It could be more of them. It could be a different mix. Like for me personally, I would say the things that I struggled with a lot was, so I had, I had, I definitely had depression. I would say it was probably a, a level up like I would say it was sort of suicidal level depression pretty bad um, I've also had anxiety to the point of like panic attacks feeling like I'm imminently about to die like any second if anybody anybody watching is going through that I'm really sorry that's horrible um, and I also had things like uh, depersonalization and derealization so um, I didn't feel like so if, if you've experienced that before you'll know what I'm talking about but if you haven't I'll try and describe it so it would feel like nothing around me is actually reality and that I'm not myself. I'm just observing, like, like I'm watching William do stuff and I wouldn't have so much conscious control over what I was doing. It's like I was sort of just watching, watching, watching it happen. And today I want to talk about how these things are really connected to the gut. Like, and I, I mean, like, really connected to the gut. So, um, I'll be, I'll be the first to, to tell anybody. I'm still not 100% healed. Uh, it's a, it's a long, it's a long road. Um, I'm, I've got myself pretty, pretty controlled most days. I, I manage everything really great. But I have health hiccups sometimes. Everybody does. It's part of the path. Let me know when your last uh, health hiccup was. What, what was it like? Um, what are your, what are your flare-up symptoms like? So for me. I'm I'm really triggered by a lot of a lot of fiber. So um, any kind of if I accidentally eat any plant material that has fiber in it, this can be du like dust in the air. This it's really inconvenient. It happens. It's impossible to avoid. I mean, you can imagine I'm out in the garden. Sometimes it happens. I'm still really sensitive to this. It really, really it makes me feel really bad. So it affects me physically. It makes me feel really tired. Chronic chronic fatigue type tired chronic fatigue syndrome type tired it brings on the the anxiety and depression but i can control it a lot by by fasting and you're going to understand you're going to i'm going to explain why why that is in a second and for those of you that have already heard of leaky gut before you probably understand why but maybe you don't understand why i'm going to explain it i'll explain the science so you can understand uh, what i want to explain here is we're talking about leaky gut we're talking about gastrointestinal hyperpermeability so increased levels of permeability in the gi tract so what happens here is you've got tight junctions in your gut. So you can imagine your gut's like this, right? So it's like these fingers. It's meant to be solid. But when you've got leaky gut, there's small, smaller holes. And they're still small. They're small holes. It's not like actually leaking. But these holes are big enough that things, that le things leak into your body that shouldn't. Things that should be staying in your digestive system are coming into your bloodstream. And they shouldn't be doing that. When these things come into your bloodstream, they are... They are causing absolute chaos. Your immune system goes absolutely mad. So this is this is the basic root cause of almost all pe people struggling with muscle activation syndrome. There's some environmental toxin coming in, and it can be your own gut flora or different types of endotoxin fragments from your gut comes into your bloodstream, and your body just goes absolutely crazy. It's like this is not meant to be here. Attack this, and it does. And that's a smart response. It's meant to do that. But it's very pro-inflammatory. It can be the basis for a lot of autoimmunity as well. So say one of these compounds that's leaked in through this permeable membrane in your gut is, uh, let's say for example, it's a, a protein from a, from a pig and it looks like your, the protein looks like the cartilage in your right ankle. Let's just say that it looks like that, for example. So your body goes absolutely crazy. It attacks this this molecule that's leaked into in the in through the gut into the bloodstream, and it shouldn't be there. It's now attacking this, but it's creating immune cells to attack this this molecule. But because this molecule looks like the cartilage in your right ankle, sorry, I'm looking down at my right ankle. Because it looks like the cartilage in your right ankle, your immune system is now attacking your right ankle as well. And congratulations, you now have arthritis autoimmune arthritis brilliant fantastic so that's just um that's just one example but say for example instead 
Instead of, oh, that's a lovely rose there, isn't it? I'm going to have to smell that. Inst <laughs> sorry. So instead of, say, the the cartilage in the in the ankle is being attacked, say it's some tissue in your brain. Say there's a, a compound in there, let's say it's a mucopolysaccharide that's leaked in, and it looks like a mucopolysaccharide that's a, a part of the structure of your brain. Well, your body is now attacking this molecule in your bloodstream because it's it's a it's creating oxidative damage. It's not supposed to be there. It's 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 really damaging and inflammatory. So your body's attacking that. But as a side consequence, it's also attacking your brain. And can you imagine what happens when I'm going to ask you this? You you give me your insight. So your body being smart is trying to defend itself, but it's accidentally attacking its own brain. Well, what symptoms do you think are going to manifest as a consequence of your body attacking its own brain? What, what, what symptoms do you think that you would that you would get as a consequence? I'll, I'll see if I'll see if anyone uh, leaves a, any comments that are good. This is just one root of of these kind of symptoms, but there's 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 more than that. So, say for example, if you're familiar with the process of a coffee enema, you you might know this. You might know this physiology already, but if you don't, I'm going to tell you anyway. So everything that comes from your digestive system, so everything that gets absorbed from your stomach, everything that gets absorbed from your small intestine, everything that gets, gets absorbed from your large intestine, all of this is coming in to your body through something called the portal hepatic vein. So this is a big vein, as you can imagine, everything that's coming from your gut is coming through this vein, and this vein is coming up and it's going into your liver, and that's where it goes, so your liver it goes just here. So it's going into your liver. This can be good and this can be bad, so... On the good side, all of your nutrients are coming in. Say you've just had some antioxidants, you've just had some green juice, you've just eaten some MCT oil, you've just eaten all of these beneficial things. All of these nutrients are coming to your liver. Your liver's like, your liver's kind of like the the project manager. It's like, oh, we've got all these new resources coming into the warehouse. It's like, let's distribute this saturated fat over here to this part of the liver so we can make cholesterol out of it. And oh, this cholesterol is ready to be shipped off. Let's send that to the adrenal glands so we can make cortisol. And, oh, we've got some EPA and DHA essential fatty acids. Let's ship that up to the brain. So your liver is basically telling everything where it's supposed to go. And this is why it's really cool that anything that comes in from your gut is going straight to your liver because the liver is what tells everything where to go. So this is the good side of this. But the bad side of this is anything that comes from your gut that's negative. So if you've got increased permeability and you've got toxins leaking in, or say you've eaten a bad food, for example. So I was giving you good healthy examples. Say you've you've eaten some GMO McDonald's or something, something really bad. You know exactly where that's going. It's going straight to your liver. So it's coming in, it's absorbing through the portal hepatic vein, coming up into the liver. Your liver has to deal with that. And it doesn't want this poisonous stuff to enter the circulation. So it will try to grab as much of these toxins as possible, and it will try to either package them up in the bile and get rid of them or it'll say these are water soluble toxins you go to the kidneys and then the kidneys filter them out or if it can't handle it if it can't handle it, it can't handle these toxins they just begin to leak out they begin to overspill, and the body trying to cope will say like okay package it up in fat like store it in fat somewhere like we can't handle this now and you know what, what what fatty tissues look like in your body this is your brain this is your nervous system this can be the subcutaneous fat under your skin and then you've got some sun coming on, some healthy sun comes, touches your skin, reacts with these toxins that have been stored under the skin, and oh no, you've got skin cancer, let's blame the sun. It's like, no, actually, it's because these toxins are leaking in, and the body isn't filtering them out fast enough. So when this, when this, when when the liver isn't able to keep up, and you've got these things circulating around in the bloodstream that shouldn't be there, all of these chemicals, all of these toxins, all of these poisons, they're going, they're going to the brain, again, going to cause inflammation, we got... Marshall J. Charmaine saying depression and Jocelyn Lilly says memory issues, you're both spot on. Um, any type of um, autoimmunity going on in the brain or any kind of inflammation that's being provoked in the brain is going to cause depression, it's going to cause memory issues, it's going to cause anxiety, it's going to cause any kind of like um, psychiatric illness that you can imagine. So this is going to affect autism, this is going to affect schizophrenia, this is going to affect anything that requires cognitive input. So this is the, the root cause of so many different sensory processing disorders. Tinnitus, um, sensitivity to light. Um, like sometimes, I'm sure you've experienced this before, someone says something and you hear them, you hear the noise, but you don't know what the words were. You didn't make a sentence out of it. 
This is because your brain is just not able to process this input quickly enough. What we need to do is, first of all, you need to make sure that the stuff coming into your body is healthy. We need to try to reduce this permeability as much as we can. Because the less, even if you're eating something toxic, so say, the, the, the example that I like to use is 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 mercury because i already know that they've done they've done the studies on this they've, they've got statistics so this isn't just theory there's actually studies that confirm this so if you were to eat say i think it was a can of tuna so i'm sure you all know cans of tuna they've got some chemicals in some mercury there's lots the ocean's polluted now there's some mercury there but the thing is if your gut permeability is low so if your gut your the integrity of your gut is very strong you're going to absorb a very very minuscule amount Whereas if you have increased permeability in the gut, the amount of mercury that you absorb from the same from consuming the same amount increases by between eight hundred to eight thousand percent. So this is like this is orders of magnitude on, on a completely different different scale. Like the amount of difference is absolutely remarkable. So you can have two people in the same environment. And I see this a lot with mold, for example. So some people get some people live in the same mouldy house, why does one person get sick and another person not? And it really comes down to the fact that the gut just isn't as permeable, because not as much of this stuff is absorbing, and the body's able to get rid of it and eliminate it. And I would say the, the worst part about this, this whole vicious cycle is, as your body tries to remove these toxins, it puts them in the gut, and if your gut's leaky, it just leaks back in. So you get stuck in this self-perpetuating loop where the body's pushing the toxin out and it gets reabsorbed. So this is why, in my in my style of approach, when I'm working with any of my one-to-one -one clients or when I'm building any of my courses or educational material or any kind of approach that I would use, it's always about making sure that we focus on the gut first. So you're, you're not going to be able to just fix the gut like like that. It takes time. Like, like I just said at the beginning of this live, I still have flare-ups. And your permeability isn't set in stone. It comes up and it comes down. It comes up and it comes down. You have a stressful event, you have more permeability. You sit down, relax and do a meditation, you reduce your permeability. Say you eat some, some nasty food, some McDonald's or something, your permeability is going up. So it's about trying to keep this permeability as low as possible and reducing the amount of work that your body has to do to keep these toxins out of it in the first place. An ounce of prevention here is worth a ton of cure because if you can prevent your body from being exposed to and absorbing these toxins, you don't have to detox them. There's, there's no effort required there because they never came into the body. So why why focus on this super thorough detox? Pro so I see people doing like binders and chlorella and taking all of this like IV glutathione and doing all of these crazy stuff. It's like crazy detox stuff and you haven't even you haven't even focused on the gut yet you haven't healed the gut so not only does any of these toxins that you try to get rid of just simply reabsorb back into the body but your gut is probably the thing that is giving you the most toxicity it's your biggest source of poison so if you've been exposed to mold or you if you've damaged your gut in some way and it's permeable even if you move to a healthy environment you stay sick well, why is that it's because the gut, the terrain is damaged in the gut, and without healing it, that's the thing that's perpetuating your sickness. So healing the gut, to me, is just no-brainer. It's number one. And that doesn't mean that we can forget the rest of everything. Yes, we're still doing detox at the same time. Yes, we're still working on hormonal health. Everything's connected. The body's a holistic organism. It doesn't have a digestive system. It doesn't have an immune system. It doesn't have lungs and heart. It's a whole thing. It all works together. There's no distinction to your body. Your body doesn't see it like that. It's all one thing. But you and we break these things down into like systems and, and organ systems and we compartmentalize so that we can understand it. So that we can build uh, programs around it so that we can increase our comprehension and we're we're problem solving by nature. That's 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 how we've built the society that the society that we have is we just try to continually solve problems. And we can't solve a problem that we can't conceptualize. So we break down these, this vastly complex organism that we that we live inside this this body. We break it down into little subsystems and things, and we have to do that. Otherwise, it's impossible to build a, a protocol to to heal it. Like for example, I'll, I've got like a perfect example in my in my own work. So I'm the one telling you this. I'm saying don't break the body down into parts. But I've got a course about the five pillars. So these are the five primary functions of the digestive system. So I've, I've literally done exactly that. I've compartmentalized the digestive system into five primary things. So you've got stomach acid, you've got digestive enzymes, you've got bile, you've got motility, and you've got mucosa. 
The thing is, these five things don't actually exist. These are all just human conceptualizations trying to understand what the gut's doing. The gut's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. It's not just these five parts. It's a whole thing. And if you don't look at everything in the context of everything else, which you can imagine is very difficult, that's why that's why people struggle with this for a long time, this is why people stay sick, because you're just trying to focus on, oh, let's do the detox, oh, let's take a probiotic now, oh, let's, let's do some gut stuff. And then you're not looking at, like, the emotional trauma, what thoughts are you thinking? Um, are you moving? Any external movement equals internal movement, so that's going to help your motility. So it's this very um, holistic, holistic organism. Marshall J. Chimane says, I've not long had a baby and I feel highly depressed. I'm not eating proper. Do you think this could be the reason? Absolutely. So when you're having a baby, you are packaging up everything that you need to create life. So these are all of the essential nutrients. This is like all, uh, all of the like omega-3s. So EPA and DHA, massive for the nervous system. Um, retinol. So this is vitamin A, but the real whole food form from animal products. Retinol. Cholesterol. Like... A third of that baby's brain is cholesterol. So if you're not able to synthesize enough cholesterol, you're not going to feel good because your brain is made of cholesterol as well. So if you're if you're trying to make a baby, your body's pr prioritizing sending all of this cholesterol, all of this EPA, all this DHA, all of these essential nutrients to make this new life form, you don't have anything left. So you need to make sure that you're replenishing your stores or you're going to feel really not good because you, you're out of nutrients. So yeah, making sure that you're eating properly is very important. So tying this back into uh, anxiety and depression. We have to seal that gut lining. We have to reduce the amount of, 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 of basically contaminants, of pollutants that are leaking into the body. Um, even if your gut permeability is low, and this is going to be a really good plug for me to talk about my constipation classes coming up soon. Even if your permeability is low, there's still going to be some level of passive diffusion. So say your permeability is low, but you've got stuff that you're holding in your gut for four, five, six, seven days. There's just that much increased chance of absorption. And like I said... Your intestinal permeability is, it fluctuates. So, say you've got, you say you make five toxins a day and put them in your gut. I'm going to use some really simple math to make this really easy to understand. Say you've got five toxins and you stick them in, and, and your body put the, puts them in the gut, and you're going to get rid of them next time you go to the toilet. If you're going to the toilet every day, the amount of toxins that you have is five, and then you get rid of them, and then it's zero. And then it's five, and then it's, you get rid of them, and it's zero. But say, for example, you're constipated and you're not going for four days in a row. Those five toxins that are in your gut are still there the next day. So now you accumulate up to 10 toxins in your gut. And then day three, you've got 15 toxins in your gut. And the amount of toxins in, in the gut is just accumulating and increasing and increasing. Across that span of those five days, your permeability is going to be going all like this. So it's going to go up, it's going to go down. You're gonna, so you're going to have a fight with your partner and then it's gonna, and then you're going to do a meditation and you're going to calm down. You're going to eat an avocado and some... Well, I mean, if I had an avocado, my permeability would go up. But you eat something that's, that's healthy for you. Your permeability comes lower. And then you do a meditation and it comes lower. And then your kid crashes the car and it's all the way up here. It comes all the way up. And these 25 toxins that you've got that you're holding inside your gut, they now have a really great chance to reabsorb. And you reabsorb them and that means... You've, you're being you're being poisoned by your own digestive system. It's this really awful negative feedback loop because now permeability goes up, which means the toxins get absorbed, and this puts massive stress on your body. So this increases permeability as well. It, this damage this causes your body to need to create more cortisol, more adrenaline, more stress hormones, which also increase permeability. All of this stuff, remember, we just talked about this a minute ago, all of this stuff absorbing back up your port hepatic vein, straight to your liver. So your liver that's already struggling with all of the jobs that it's trying to do, it's trying to make cholesterol, it's trying to do, it's trying to make 500 different types of enzymes that it makes every day. It's trying to process mold and mycotoxins and pesticides and the hairspray that, that you walk past, the the fragrance in the room, all of this stuff, your liver's trying to deal with all of this, and now it gets to deal with toxins that it already got rid of and pushed back into the digestive system, and now they've reabsorbed. And this is why constipation is so dangerous, because it's exhausting your liver. Your liver is like a filter. It's filtering your blood and removing the poisons and making your blood pure. If your blood is full of mold and mycotoxins and fragments and lipopolysaccharides, and I'll give you a statistic about lipopolysaccharides. So this is a test that was done. They've done this on mice and they've done this on humans. So they get healthy mice, healthy humans, never had a mental health problem in their life, completely healthy. Literally like 
perfect health. So not even a, a consideration of having any kind of health problem. And they get lipopolysaccharides. So this is a compound that's produced by gram-negative bacteria in your digestive system. And when you've got increased permeability, this stuff is leaking in all of the time. So they get these healthy mice, healthy humans, and they inject them with lipopolysaccharides. And within, I think it was 30 minutes to an hour, every single human had clinical depression. In, like, like that, not, no one was exempt. Every single person had chemical depression. So you can see this massive link. And the mice, the mice as well. So it's harder to say what does a mouse do when it's depressed. Because, well, we can't really... They're not so developed as our, as we are, as our brains. But they all just... They lay down. They don't want to eat anything. They literally just lay there. They don't interact with each other. They don't play. They basically just lay there. And they they basically would just lay there until they die. They have no motivation to do anything. That's depression. So you can chemically induce depression through IV application of lipopolysaccharides. But we don't need to use an IV. We don't need to inject it. If your gut's leaky, this stuff is leaking in all of the time and your body's packaging these things up moving them out and if you're constipated these these things are just going to be reabsorbing so now's a good plug for my constipation class so constipation class coming up in it's coming up on thursday 4 p.m bst british summertime um the gates are closing in 24 hours so if you're interested in joining you've got 24 hours before i before i basically can't let you in anymore this is because we're, we've included a, a symptoms and stool tracker as part of the class. So this way I can, like I personally am going to be looking at these things. I'm going to be tracking through your progress to see, like, are you, so we're going to talk about lots of different things on there. We're going to talk about like things like juicing, we're going to talk about probiotics, enemas, um, electrolytes, fiber. There's loads of different stuff and fiber is not what you think. We're not going to be talking... So, fibre is actually inversely correlated with constipation. The more fibre you eat, the more likely you are to be constipated. So, that's just flipped your, probably your whole world on its head. So, yeah, we're going to be going into all of this. And I'm giving out trackers to everybody that are personal. So, I can... These trackers all have statistics that I can... That I'm tracking on you. So, it's like, are you doing juice? Are you doing... How are you fixing your electrolytes? What's your sleep like? And I'm tracking all of these things so I can keep you accountable. And these are updated in real time. So this is a Google Drive document. Everybody has their own unique um, slide. So I can see in real time what it is that you're doing when you're updating your tracker, what's working for you, what isn't. So if I need to, I can reach out and say, look, I've noticed in your tracker you've done, say you've you've juiced red bell peppers instead of green bell peppers for the last three days and you've been constipated. Maybe there's something going on here. So it's going to give me this like super keen top-down view of exactly what's going on with you. So I can... Because this is what I really do in my job is I'm... I'm about looking for patterns and trying to figure out which which dots connect. And if I've got all of this information through this tracker, I can do this. And yeah, it's really cool. So it's a one off. It's a one off class. I'm going to go through all the information that I that I just mentioned in so much detail. It's probably going to be two, maybe three hours. Um, I'll go through it as fast as I can. Last time we did a mycotoxin class, it was only supposed to be two hours. It was nearly four. So I don't know. I just go until we're done, and it's got Q and A and everything in it as well. If you want more information about that class, leave me a little poo emoji. You know the little, the little, you know the little smiley poo emoji. Just let, leave me that in the comments, and I'll send you a direct message with some more information. Anyway, that's enough of that. So back onto the back onto the anxiety and depression. So these aren't the only causes of anxiety and depression. There is a lot more stuff going on. Even if you've got low levels of intestinal permeability, there are. So when when I say something like this, you might imagine that. I'm completely invalidating all of the, like the psychological research and the all the other stuff into, into these kinds of mental health conditions, and I'm not doing that. I'm just saying, why would we look at anxiety and depression as psychological disorders and medicate? So using things like um, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. I mean, these these, these classi- classification of drugs, they don't actually have an acknowledged uh, methodology methodology of action. We don't actually know if these drugs like fluoroxetine and citalopram, we don't actually know if they stop serotonin from being absorbed and allow it to recirculate. We don't actually know. That's just a theory. So we've got this whole classification of drugs that we don't really know how they work, and we use these to treat um, anxiety and depression. But why do that when we haven't looked at the physiological root causes of these things? We know that endotoxins, like lipopolysaccharides, can cause anxiety and depression. Like, it's scientific fact. There's studies. You can go and look that up. It's on Google Scholar. It's there. So we know this sort of stuff. 
and I'm not saying that these drugs don't these drugs don't have their place, and that therapy and um, different types of things don't have their place. But why would we use that as the first line of of treatment of of approach of like it's not even logical? Let's look at the physiological side of things first. The the, the physics. Like let's 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 look at this and try to resolve this, and then. Like I would, I would say in, in my experience, like personally and with my clients, we do this physical stuff, and the anxiety and depression either completely goes away or it's reduced by like seventy to eighty percent. And if you've experienced anxiety and depression before, can you imagine what a sixty, seventy, eighty percent reduction in that would be like? That small twenty, thirty, forty percent that you've got left is so much easier to work on with therapy and other types of. Um, like the more traditional psychological therapy type things because you've turned the volume down massively because yeah there is still there is still anxiety there is still depression and again these these emotions are important these these are telling us really big clues anxiety saying something's wrong and i don't know what it is depression saying i don't like the direction that my life's going and i want it to go in a di- in a different direction and you can see how this is true on a physiological level but also on a higher level of where where is your life going so I'm not. I'm not invalidating these things. I'm. I'm pro medication if it's necessary. I'm pro. I, I'm. I'm in therapy myself, so I. I definitely am not saying that these are these things aren't things that should be pursued. But why would they be the first line? Like, why would they be the first line of approach? It doesn't make any sense to me. So, if you do struggle with any kind of, so let me go over the list again: anxiety, depression, depersonalization, derealization, um, even things like schizophrenia and autism. These have physiological links. I'm not saying they don't have mental, emotional, and things that require therapy, but look at the physiology first. It just makes sense. It just makes sense. Just cover the base, and it might just go away by itself. Um, and then it moves on even further from that. So any kind of sensory processing disorder, mesophonia, tinnitus, sensitivity to light, dyslexia, so that's not being able to, to make out words properly, dyspraxia, so that's having poor balance and poor coordination. It's like, yeah, maybe there are some higher levels problems to solve here but look at the physiology first Um, and this goes for so many different things as well so any type of autoimmune disease can be super connected to intestinal permeability so um, any kind of autoimmune disease let let me say it again any kind of autoimmune disease Crohn's and colitis arthritis lupus Sjogren's syndrome I think Sjogren's syndrome so that's a really hard one one to pronounce S-J-O-R-G-E-N-S it's an autoimmune disease where the body is attacking its own mucus secreting cells. So these are things like the anywhere you've got mucosa in your body. So your eyes, your nose, your mouth, inside the inner ear, the throat and the whole digestive system, the lungs. Um, all of this is is susceptible to Sjogren's syndrome. So this is a, a massive thing that I see going undiagnosed people have it to a subclinical level i've never had a diagnosed personally but i know i have it it's 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 too obvious for me to not realize but i don't chase the diagnosis anymore diagnosis is just a label it doesn't really help you solve the problem once you understand the problem properly solving the problem doesn't require any kind of diagnosis so for me it's like i'd know i have an autoimmune flare up something would happen the first thing that happens my eyes go dry my mouth goes dry i can feel like gastritis type of pains in my stomach because the mucosal layer has been has been reduced i get more constipated i stop sweating as much and this is this is so classic of schrodinger's syndrome because the body so i what i imagine let me, i'll walk you through what i think is happening here so i think i have some type of organism in my gut which creates a fragment of maybe it's a fragment of itself maybe it's a metabolite that it makes i don't know but this is this is really the case for any anyone that has an autoimmune disease and it doesn't matter what you eat, it's it, the autoimmune disease can always always persist. And it might get better, but it, it always persists, even on a very, very subtle level. Like, my eyes are still very slightly dry. But compared to what they were, like, five years ago, oh, my God, they're so moist. It feels... Oh, they're, they're great. So what's happening is there's some type of thing leaking in from the digestive system, and the body is attacking it, and that looks like your mucus-secreting membrane cells. Or it looks like the... So we used the example earlier. It looks like the the tissue in your brain, and now you've got an autoimmune brain condition. Or it looks like the the cartilage in your right ankle. Now you've got autoimmune arthritis in your right ankle. So this is a really common root cause. And kind of forget where I was going with that. I really, I really like pick up steam, and I just <laughs> just plow into it. I just 
I find it so fascinating. Okay, I remember. So, um, this is any type of mental health problem, any type of sensory processing disorder, any type of autoimmune condition. All of these things are, are, are so connected to the gut. And if you don't work on the gut first, it, it doesn't make any sense. Like, I, I try to look at this from a very logical, very rational, problem-solving approach. And if you're not looking at the gut, it just doesn't make any sense to me. So, take a look in the gut, try and resolve it. If you need, if you need help with your gut, First of all, check out the constipation class. Leave me a poop thing. I know I got one from Jocelyn. Jocelyn Lily says, she gave me a, a poo emoji and says, I'm interested. Um, I'm also interested in the mycotoxin one as well. Great, yeah, that's a recorded class. I can um, give you some information about how you can get access to that. If you're just getting started with gut health, I definitely recommend my five pillars course. It's a seven part pre-recorded series. Walks you through the five pillars of the digestive system. So this is a stomach acid, digestive enzymes, bile, motility, and the mucosa. We also talk about the microbiome, and we also talk about, we have a class called The Big Picture. If you found this inform information interesting and helpful, insightful, revolutionary, inspiring, whatever, please let me know. Like, I, I really care. Yes, this is my job, but I really care. It's not just about the money. If I just wanted money, I'd go and do something else. It's, being a coach is hard. Like, making this content is hard. I'd way rather go and do something else if I just wanted money. I'm in this for, for you, for your results, for your health. Like, this is why I'm here. So if you like this, please let me know. Let me know that you appreciate it. And please share it as well. More people that see this, more people I can help. So um, if you liked it, let me know. And I'll see you soon. I, I, wish you have a, I hope you have a really lovely day. And I wish you all the best. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.